and welcome to our kids service. We're so excited for you to see everything that we have for you. But before we do that, we need you to stand up, make some room, because we're gonna jump into some worship. Hey kids, let's put our hands together as we sing Greater. together. name Jesus your mighty name I think, I think it's gone. Oh my goodness, all right, I'm just gonna whew, set that down. That was toasty. I don't trust him, nope. Hey everybody, we're so excited that you are here today. This month we're exploring the story of Esther. When we take a closer look at this story, we'll be able to see that the story is not a fairy tale about a girl becoming a queen, but a story about how God is always at work in our lives. Before we get into our Bible story, let's start with our big answer. And what is the big answer? It's the answer to the big question. 
This is a question you should get from that important adult in your life, and that is, what did you learn in Kids Church today? Our big answer for today is we can serve God and others. And our memory verse for this series comes from the book of Esther, and it says, who knows, perhaps you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Esther 4.14. Last week, we were introduced to some of our main characters in this story, Esther, Mordecai, and King Xerxes. Let's do a quick recap to bring everyone up to speed. God created the world and everything in it, including people. God had a plan to bless the whole world through Abraham's family, the Israelites. Earlier in the Bible, we saw how God rescued the Israelites out of Egypt and then how God put kings in place to lead the people. Unfortunately, the people kept turning away from God over and over and over again. In fact, we can read in the Bible about how things got so bad that God allowed the Israelites to be captured by other nations. Even while the people were captives in a faraway land though, there were some men and women who still loved and honored God. This is where we meet up with Esther. The Jewish people living in Persia during Esther's life were either older people or descendants of people who had been captured and forced from their land by the Babylonians many years before. This often happened when other nations conquered another. But even though Esther was an Israelite growing up in Persia, she still kept her Jewish traditions and beliefs following God. King Xerxes was the king of Persia. He was a pretty scary guy. After firing his queen for not showing up to a party, he needed a new queen. King Xerxes searched for a new queen for an entire year, and well, to make a long story short, he chose Esther. Persia was not a Hebrew nation though, and Esther and Mordecai were the great-great-grandchildren of Israelites who had been captured and taken from their homeland. The Israelites living in Persia had many of the same opportunities as other people living there, but they had to be careful. If they did anything that the Persian people or government thought was a threat to society, their lives could be in danger. And the same was true for Esther even though she was queen. Last week, we talked about some parts you need to make a story a fairy tale. You need a princess or a damsel in distress, a hero that comes in to save her, and a happy, happily ever after ending. Another important part of a fairy tale is a villain, the bad guy of the story. And although the story of Esther isn't a fairy tale, it does have a bad guy, and his name is Haman. Haman was an official in King Xerxes' court, and he was elevated to a very important position. But this wasn't good for the Jewish people living in Persia. Haman expected everyone to bow before him, but Esther's cousin Mordecai refused. This made Haman very angry. But instead of just going after Mordecai, Haman wanted to destroy all of the Israelites in the Persian Empire. In Esther chapter 3, verses 8-9, through 9, it says, Then Haman informed King Xerxes, There is one ethnic group scattered throughout the peoples in every province of your kingdom, keeping themselves separate. Their laws are different from everyone else's, and they do not obey the king's law. It is not in the king's best interest to tolerate them. If the king approves, let an order be drawn up authorizing their destruction. Haman wanted the king to get rid of all the Israelite people. That's terrible. And even worse, the king actually agreed with Haman's awful plan. The king sent a letter all over the kingdom declaring that on the 13th day of the 12th month, all Jewish people were to be killed. Esther found out about the king's order from her cousin Mordecai because he sent her a message about it. Esther could have said something about her faith in that moment, but it wasn't the right time. And this makes the book of Esther seem strange compared to other books in the Bible about the exile. For example, Esther keeps her religion silent, as does Mordecai. Maybe they were ashamed or they didn't want to be discriminated against. But compare them to, say, Daniel and his friends, who are very vocal about their faith, vocal enough that they were tossed into the fire and tossed into the lion's den. Even though we live in a country where we are allowed to worship God the way we want to, it can be hard to openly talk about our faith with people who don't share our beliefs. Sometimes we do this because we want to fit in with the people around us, especially if, they, if we know that they don't want to have anything to do with God or to go to church. If we speak up about our faith, we are at risk of making them mad or being rejected by them. And if we like them, that can be a scary feeling. Esther and Daniel are two examples of how God can use anyone, no matter who they are or where they live. Daniel was more open about his faith and was even thrown into the lion's den because of it. 
Esther, though, kept her faith quiet until it was absolutely necessary to make it public. But both Daniel and Esther learned to live in peace with the people around them. Their character allowed the people around them to trust them. In Romans chapter 12, verse 18, the Apostle Paul tells us we should do the same thing. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Both Esther and Daniel show us that if we can serve God and also serve others, even if they don't believe, how we act to those around us, at church, and everywhere else is a way of showing God's love to other people without having to say that we follow Jesus. Think of some ways you can serve other people and show them how much Jesus loves them. You can help your elderly neighbor bring in their groceries or organize a toy drive for the children's wing at your local hospital. You could paint a picture for your grandma and grandpa and mail it to them. Is your little brother learning to read? Spend some time helping him before bed. Listen to your parents without interrupting or arguing back. Invite your best friend to church. Pray for those in your family and in your community. There are so many ways to serve God and all the people around us. We just need to pray to God and ask him to show us where the need is, how we can help, and when the time is right. Just like our big answer says, we can serve God and others. Oh no, the dragon's back. Where's my sword and shield? Oh no! Ah! It's time for Memory Verse Breakdown! Hey kids, today we're going to break down this week's Memory Verse. Are you ready? Okay, here's this week's memory verse. Think you've got it? Try saying it out loud. All right, let's take some words away. You think you still got it? Try saying it out loud again. All right, let's bring those words back in and see how you did. Did you get it right? Awesome! Well, that's this week's Memory Verse Breakdown. How'd you do? Memory Verse Breakdown! You are about to play Bible Escape Room. You're going to start in a giant mansion and you must get out of the front door before time runs out. But to do that, you're going to have to unlock several doors. Each door needs the correct answer to a Bible riddle for it to unlock. Are you ready? Let's go. You've got 20 seconds to answer this first riddle. I disobeyed God's one wish and ended up in the belly of a fish. Who am I? I'm Jonah. Great job. You made it to the second door. You've got 20 seconds to escape. I took down a giant and everyone said I was brave. But now, my friends and I are hiding in a cave. Who am I? I'm David. Impressive! You made it past the first two riddles, but there's another locked door You've got 20 seconds to escape. I was famous for being strong, but that only lasted while my hair was long. Who am I? I'm Samson. Well done! 
You're making good progress, but we've got to keep going. Here's another locked door. You've got 20 seconds to escape. I prayed when the law said no one could pray, and God kept the hungry lions away. Who am I? Daniel. Wow, you're getting good at this. But can you get past this next door? You've got 20 seconds to escape. I risked my life to ask the king a question. And then I told the king about Haman's deception. Who am I? I'm Esther. Great work. These are getting harder. Can you figure out this next riddle? You've got 20 seconds. I was spending the night chained up in jail when an angel broke me out without even posting bail. I'm Peter. You're so close. There are only two doors left. Here's the next riddle. You've got 20 seconds. When my son was born, I had to lay him in the hay. Now we celebrate his birthday on Christmas Day. Who am I? I'm Mary. This is it. You've made it to the last door. You're so close. You've got 20 seconds to answer this last riddle and break out. In my father's house, there are many rooms. You can have one because I broke out of the tomb. Who am I? I'm Jesus. Great job! You broke out! You really know your Bible characters. Way to go! Thank you so much for being with us today. Before you leave, have that important adult in your life go to lifechurchgreenbay.com kids where you can grab our Kids Connect card. There you can discuss our big answer, memory verse, and even more. We love you so much. Have a great week.